Manchester High School, located in Midlothian, Virginia, is a high school that Chris attended from 1996 to 2000. Chris portrays his period as among the happiest in his life, even though he proudly slept through a good deal of it. He would like nothing more than to use a time machine to return to these serene and calm days. Among Chris's classes were the usual subjects, two years of Spanish, I am reminded of an old Spanish expression which goes simply as, Tu necesitas ucrepsa eta y usino se va para ganar felicidad por vida. Sex education. You know who else? coping skills and a lot of art classes. According to Chris, he achieved an honor roll grade streak all the way through Manchester High School. However, according to the Manchester High School leaks, he achieved a D plus in English in his junior year, having not turned in several major assignments and getting failing grades on most of the ones he did turn in. Chris proudly claimed he was mainstreamed through high school, but the special education classes imply that Chris was mainstreamed to the extent that he attended the same school as his typically functional peers, but not much more than that. He also rode on the freaking handicapped special ed bus, an experience which haunts him to this day. In June 2014, Quickie Forms user SkyRaider91, also known as Cousin Al, began leaking scans of several documents from Chris's junior year, from 1998 to 1999 of high school. Many of the pages appear to be charred and or water damaged, likely as a result of the January 2014 fire and subsequent events at 14 Branchland Court. It was revealed in November 2014 that these had been obtained by trolls sifting through the trash at the burnt out house, which although not illegal, still lends credence to the view that the trolling of Chris has gone too far. It is very apparent from these leaks that many of Chris's teachers gave him very high grades which he indisputably did not deserve. Whether they did this out of misguided pity, a fear of being seen to play kick the autistic or simply being incompetent themselves, giving Chris, who had perfectly adequate mental faculties for the work, undeserved extra credit would have contributed to his ego and general laziness. Even within this small core sample of his work, it's apparent that Chris frequently left out sections he didn't want to complete, wrote S essays in a first-person subjective tone and even wrote parts of his work in the wrong language and still got good or even perfect scores. The teacher who enabled this abysmal workmanship probably had the best intentions and or incompetence, but even then though they may have made Chris, Bob and Barb happy, they certainly did Chris no favours in the long run. Thankfully at least a few of his markers had the sense to treat his work like they treat anyone else, and he has them to thank for only being able to get into the local community college. Thanks to the Manchester High Leaks, we have access to some of Chris's academic accomplishments and assignments such as 10th grade, obtaining an F on an English assignment. 11th grade, English class, getting a 78%. Parenting interview. Presumably, Chris interviewed Barb and or Bob for this assignment, and most of the answers are short and vague to the point of not making much sense at all. It's unclear whether Barb and or Bob were giving apathetic answers, or whether Chris was just too lazy to record their full response. Humorously, the interviewee say that the hardest part of being a parent has been dealing with the public school system, and that they chose to have children simply because it's nice to have kids. They also make mention of laughter from four kids and three situations. This idiosyncratic expression has been interpreted as referring to the social stigma that Bob and Barb endured as a result of their respective previous relationships and children. It is likely to be just an obscure antiquated idiomatic formation not to be taken literally, referring to the various wacky happenings stemmed from raising one single very special boy, which somehow miraculously ended up with Chris getting an astounding 50 out of 50 perfect score. Describing Development Worksheet, a worksheet in which Chris was asked to identify one of five characteristics of development exemplified by various situations. Chris only managed to identify half of the characteristics correctly, earning him an F. Parenting Worksheet. These worksheets included Helpless Unborn Child, a worksheet about behaviors which may adversely affect prenatal development. Chris wrote that several seemingly random things can cause slow minds and completely ignored about half of the risk factors 
actors mentioned, yet for some reason he still received a 14 out of 20, a C-. Chapter 1 Study Guide For this worksheet about child development, Chris seems to have regurgitated sentences from a textbook, which makes it a boring read. Of note is that he gave television as an example of a child's environment, possibly shedding some light on Barbara's exceptional parenting techniques. Chapter 2 Study Guide This worksheet seems to be more regurgitated textbook material, but Chris found subtle ways to screw it up, like using mathematical inequalities. He also doesn't seem to understand the concept of adoption, referring to it as a right to raise a child who is biologically their own. Chapter 5 Study Guide Chris misspelled a couple words, but other than that, this worksheet is just more boring textbook paraphrasing, this time about parental development. Empathy Belly Essay Chris describes the experience of wearing an empathy belly, complete with disturbingly honest content, such as, while my legs were separated, it put pressure on my private part, which gave me a strange weird feeling. Which, by the way, Chris, I think that's called a boner. Amendment Timeline An illustrated timeline briefly describing the 27 amendments to the United States Constitution. As is to be expected, Chris used multiple differing conventions for writing out dates and made numerous prominent factual spelling and grammatical errors, which are preserved in the transcription. Notably, Chris seems to have read the antiquated language used in older amendments at completely literal face value with no sense of interpretation, leading to him getting many facts and details wrong. For example, while most true American patriots know the 13th Amendment as the amendment that ended slavery, it also contains a parenthetical stating that involuntarily servitude as conviction for crime would continue to exist in the United States. Chris seems to have focused on this minor detail about crime punishment rather than the momentous occasion of freeing the slaves, as the entire purpose of the amendment and even included an illustration implying that the 13th Amendment created slavery for criminals. While the 23rd Amendment actually gave voting rights to citizens of Washington DC, Chris seems to have confused the District of Columbia for referring to Columbia, South Carolina, and drew a picture of the state pleased that he can now vote for president. This may have something to do with the fact that South Carolina did not adopt a popular vote for president until 1868, making it by far the last state to do so, although this is probably giving Chris too much credit. In actuality, the 24th Amendment abolishes poll taxes, while Chris makes it seem like it suddenly requires them. Additionally, the 26th Amendment doesn't apply exclusively to men. It gives suffrage to all Americans 18 and older, regardless of sex. His interpretation of the 11th Amendment, that people of other countries can't blame the US for their troubles, is completely inexplicable. Chris glosses over most of the Bill of Rights Amendments, including the First Amendment that allows him to behave the way he does over the internet the whole thing simply means innocent until proven guilty. Strategic Defense Initiative Essay The Strategic Defense Initiative was a system Reagan proposed in 1983. It was never actually implemented, at least not to even close to have Reagan proposed it, in terms of technology and scale, and certainly not during his presidency. Despite that, Chris vomited up this four-sentence essay on how the system of zappers and mirrors in space defended against evil empire. Granted, the assignment asked for him to defend against the evil empire, but he still didn't follow most of the instructions. He still got yet another perfect grade, know that his teacher misspelled the names of several terms slash people in the heading, and that the debt increase gave for SDI is comically low. Reagan increased the defense budget by tens of billions of dollars, and not millions. All evidence seems to suggest his teacher should not have been hired. Election Worksheet This worksheet deals with various aspects of elections, such as voting, political campaigns, etc. As in several other documents for non-Spanish subjects, Chris used broken Spanish for some reason, although he provided English translations for most of it, and explained in the margin that he was practicing his Spanish. Despite the irrelevant, incorrect use of Spanish and the extremely simple answers, this worksheet somehow again received the perfect grade. Canterbury Tales Essay An essay on the nun's priest's tale from Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, with two drafts, a planning slash inventory sheet and a grade sheet. The rough draft looks to be peer-reviewed, while the second draft was most likely reviewed by the teacher. The first draft of the essay is just the narrative of the story the essay was supposed to be about, and Chris uses extremely basic punctuation, mainly commas, incorrectly, as well as making up words. The second draft is the same thing, minus the fictitious words, but plus numerous tense errors, and with an awfully written conclusion tacked onto the end. Chris somehow managed to earn 69% from a very generous, very stupid teacher 
culture. Japan War Essay A wandering, factually incorrect essay written to be about Japan and the United States in World War II, which Chris sagaciously described as a very tragic event with guns, insults and the yuck. Most of the content is directly cited from other works, several of which are actually about World War I. What little content Chris came up with himself is highly subjective. Informally and terribly written, the final draft begins with this essay is about and is frequently racist. The thesis, if it can even be called that, is extremely vague. There is an outline and two drafts of the essay. What mark he received from it can only be guessed at. Of note is that despite the essay being for his English class and being corrected on it in the rough draft, Chris wrote parts of the heading in Spanish including writing his name as Ricardo on the final draft. Best President Essay A typically brief essay for social studies class in which Chris explained why John F. Kennedy was the best modern president. Both a rough draft and a final draft are included. While the teacher corrected the final draft, all the notations on the rough draft are in Chris's handwriting. Both drafts are typed. The marking can only be described as generous. Chris constantly changes tense incorrectly, all the paragraphs are terse and uniformative, and Chris even manages to misquote the famous line from Kennedy's inaugural address. Chris received a final grade of 43 out of 50, plus an additional 10 points because it was typed. Note that the English teacher who gave him this mark made multiple false corrections, crossed out the same mistake the second time it appeared, but not the first time, and did not know how to spell integrity, and yet he still got hired as a teacher. Student Life Essay A planning sheet and a rough draft of an essay about how high school students' jobs affect their school performance. Not a problem for Chris, of course. Chris inexplicably drew a star at the beginning of each line. An editor, transcribed below in bold, hopefully appear, but unfortunately, probably a teacher, has made numerous false corrections of things that were not incorrect, as well as making grievous spelling and grammar errors in the written comments. Standards of Learning Essay Chris suggested in this Standards of Learning essay that his high school senior class should found the construction of an indoor swimming pool in the gym as their class gift, exhibiting that he has no notion of how much that would cost. He alludes that the gym teacher having wet wild times the student in the prospective pool. It's unclear whether this is an attempt at innuendo or whether Chris generally didn't realize how it sounded. 30 Lucky Writing Tips this document is perhaps the single most baffling example of Chris's writing currently on record, which is no mean feat. The 13 lucky writing tips are a list of notes Chris took which were most likely suggestions and recommendations, duly ignored, from a textbook that were read off by a teacher. Directly contradicting the very first item on the list, Chris switches from English to Spanish mid-sentence about a third of the way through the list. Spanish Adjective Worksheet This worksheet is dated 8 to 1999, most likely referring to the 8th of February 1999 using the Spanish date format. Chris used pop culture figures such as Pokemon, Sonic and the Powerpuff Girls to illustrate vocabulary words. Chris's class seems to have watched Spanish dubs of the Powerpuff Girls in class so for once he had an excuse for shoving fictional characters into his schoolwork. His Pokemon are revealing. He describes Christian the Charmeleon as muy delgado, very thin, Ricardo the Raichu as muy divertido, very funny and Cole the Beedrill as muy feo, very ugly. This appears to be Chris's earliest reference to Pokemon. It had been introduced in North America four months earlier. Spanish Las Profesiones Worksheet This ungraded worksheet deals with labeling various people with job titles and then stating whether they are bueno or malo, good or bad, at their work presumably. Chris refers to Ricardo as a bombero, a firefighter, and to Bob as an ingeniero técnico, a technical engineer. Demonstrating his mastery of Spanish, Chris describes every single person on the worksheet as bueno and wrote de of masculine instead of is is for a few rows resulting in nonsensical phrases like april de reportera de tv bueno april of good tv reporter spanish las profesiones y nacionalidad worksheet a worksheet which required pictures of six different professions and six different flags with one profession and flag combination per page and sentences describing each page e.g el es un médico cubano or he is a cuban doctor chris opted to hand draw each page with crayon magic markers using Lego minifigures and or Lego catalog photos as models. Note that the United States flag, complete with 25 pentagrams and 15 stripes, is depicted waving in the breeze while the flags of all other nations are shown flat. Safety in the Kitchen Worksheet A dull worksheet designed to educate children about kitchen safety. This worksheet evidently had little effect on Chris since he went on to slip on cat shit in the kitchen and then cause his house to burst into flames because of a kitchen-related incident. 
Kitchen Safety Outline. An outline on kitchen safety. As with the worksheet, Chris failed to absorb most of the guidelines here. Unless putting bandages on our mom's holy buttocks counts as guarding against pests or bugs. Kitchen Safety. True False Worksheet. A True False Worksheet on kitchen safety. Chris's answers have been corrected and each has been marked with either check or smiley with no apparent pattern. The few known assignments from 12th grade are the following. September. Praise from his English teacher for the short story How the Pokemon Came Into Our Pokeballs, which is a short story done in his senior year of high school. In it, he attempts to establish some form of creation myth for the Pokemon universe. Coincidentally, there is an official one now. Also, the title itself is erroneous, as the story only explains how Pokemon came to be. It mentions absolutely nothing about Pokeballs. Apparently, this assignment pleased Chris's teacher. How it got a good grade is a mystery lost to time. March. CD cover for Christian's favorite hits. I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain what this mythical creation for this assignment is, but for the initiated, it is a homemade CD which sparked the creation and debut of everyone's favorite Sonic recolor, Sonichu. April. Naps in class for the self-documentary A Week with Christian Chandler, which was a school report that Chris wrote to document one week in his high school life. The week documented was the 29th of April through the 5th of May 2000, when Chris was 18. Although Chris gave the report a copyright date of the 24th of April 2000. Many events were covered during these seven short days, but the most significant among them must be the creation of the cover for Christian's favorite hits on which Sonichu made his first ever appearance. The information contained within Chris's report provides valuable insight into his early years, chronicling the development of some of his current hobbies and habits. As just one example, he openly admits to falling asleep during his class on a regular basis, foreshadowing his future in activity and overall laziness post-college. Chris seems to have been enrolled in basic behavioral adjustment classes, including a coping class slash study hall, but he evidently spent all of his time in these classes reading R.L. Stein books instead of paying attention. Also, Chris refers to some of the other students on his school bus as slow in the minds. This account of his high school days is nowhere near as idyllic as he would later portray them to be, suggesting that he is romanticized them. Most of Chris's friends were gal pals, not joy boys. During his senior year, he had classes and ate lunch with them every other day. The high school had alternating odd and even days. On odd days, he ate alone. He seemed to have had a strong dislike towards pupils he saw as immature boys, which might be related to Chris having been constantly picked on. Chris's so-called friends are Kelly Andes, Tiffany Gowen, Sarah Bevel, Miranda Mitchell, Molly Quarles, Joseph Herring, another fellow water boy for the basketball team, and and Brian, boyfriend of Sarah. In reality, none of these people can legitimately said to have been a friend of Chris. As he himself admits, he spent little time with his so-called friends outside of school hours, and in his Song of Christian, written at age 16, he describes himself as being lonely and isolated. He couldn't go to pep rallies because they were too loud. Years later, Chris found out that none of his gal pals actually liked him, and that they were actually arranged by Bob and the principal, much to his devastation. In the Facebook post where he revealed this, he also made the bizarre claim that he hadn't really been bullied much because he'd never been beaten up or stuffed into a locker, seemingly oblivious to the fact that the vast majority of school bullying consists of emotional, not physical abuse. This once again reinforces the fact that Chris can't really tell the difference between what he sees on TV and what happens in real life. Chris was a water boy and a so-called manager, according to him, for the Manchester High Lancers basketball team during his freshman year, along with Joseph Herring. He got a certificate and an embroidery M for his work. Chris's servitude to the basketball team, probably the only meaningful interaction he had with other males throughout his entire adolescence, remains a cherished memory so much that he continues to obsess about it over a decade after graduating. A few references were slipped into the comics. Manchester High was featured heavily in Sonic Two issues. Seven. It begins with Chris hanging around his old school without being there any official business. Magic Chen then brings Chris and Sonichu back in time to 1996 when Chris was a 14 year old water boy. Based on his actions in the comics, his manager job consisted of leaning against the wall. In Sonichu issue 9, Megacula Skunk was depicted wearing a Lancer's cheerleader outfit. In August 2010, Chris made a handful of characters and a vehicle in Mod Nation Racers to commemorate his time with the basketball team. The Manchester High Mod Nation collection includes includes a team bus, two of the players, a cheerleader, and Chris himself at age 14, looking as if he's afraid of being jumped by something just behind him. <laughs>
On the 9th of August 2013, as Chris continued to fantasize about his high school years, Chris uploaded the logo of the team on Facebook. In November, he revealed his fantastical Lego High School, which was decorated with a number of Lancer stickers. It featured a basketball court, gymnasium, showers and a locker room. At age 15, Chris was demoted from the regular school bus to the special education bus. He would be scarred by this experience of being forced to spend time with the seriously mentally handicapped or slow in the minds, as he calls them. The school switched him to the bus of doom after confrontation with another student on the normal bus. In Chris's version of the events, he and the black boy were in constant competition to be the first off the bus. One day, the other boy punched Chris in order to beat him out the door. At this point, Chris's recollections are inconsistent. In one version, he did not fight back, did not bleed, and his glasses were broken. In another, Chris punched back and ended up with a nosebleed. In yet another, his glasses were unbroken. Chris's parents then met with the school administration who placed Chris in the special ed bus while the other boy got off scot-free. Given Chris's propensity for framing himself as the victim and his unrealistic assessment, a high school freshman isn't going to care about a race to get off the school bus first, especially against a mentally slow student, and if he had and assaulted Chris for it, the school wouldn't have thrown the book at him. It's likely the events unfolded a different way. Chris, in his autistic zeal to be first off the bus, might have simply bumped into the other student, slipped and fell. In an absolutely bizarre set of foreshadowing future events, Chris took his mom to the senior prom. Which in my opinion this foreshadowing was a bit too exaggerated and over the top, but nonetheless a nice touch. His gal pal, Tiffany Gowen, felt sorry for him and so she asked him to dance, which they did so for what seemed like hours to Chris and arguably seemed like hours to Tiffany too. Chris hopes to reenact this historic moment at an upcoming high school reunion. That is assuming there aren't any security guards there for the express purpose of keeping him out. For Chris, graduation was an emotional experience. Prior to the handing out of the diplomas was an award ceremony recognizing gifted students. Chris became jealous and upset that he was not given an award for his art class assignments. Chris was so upset about that that many years later he fantasized about going back in time and slipping in an award for himself. When the diploma ceremony rolled out and it was his turn to receive it, a despondent Chris took his diploma, slapped away the hand of the presenter when he offered a handshake, then ran off to cry. The star pin has since been lost. In Chris's own words, I only got recognized for my grades with a star pin, yet they had more fancier words for more important qualities. I should have been highly recognized for my artistic talents I showed in my many art classes for the award ceremonies before graduation day. I felt crestfallen greatly from not getting recognized for any of my talents. I excelled in math too for the love of God. I had not gotten over the award ceremony on the graduation day, but to add lemon juice to an open wound, it was a dark and rainy day that day, and they handed out more talented awards right before handing out any diplomas. When I went up there to get mine, I was feeling depressed, upset, crestfallen and ticked off. When the award was handed to me, I took it without looking anyone in the eye, and I did not shake anyone's hand. I just walked back to my seat in the graduating crowd. Then, soon after, I just walked the wrong way up the center aisle, found an isolated table and cried myself out. My mother found me later and comforted me. My father was ashamed of the way I acted, and he would later still be angry at recalling the moment. Tiffany also found me and gave me a caring moment of condolences back there. I gave her a plush Psyduck as a graduating gift beforehand. Chris accepted his Manchester High School diploma on stage. This photo must have been taken immediately before he ran off to cry. In another retelling, Chris reveals more straight anger. So while I sit there and feel happy for my friends, you got something, I was so fucking jealous. I was a high functioning autistic boy who came way beyond out of his social shell, only to get a zilch, nada, zip, a big fat zero. I felt so devastated and out of sync. I ended up doing what I did when I went there to accept the diploma. No handshake, tears and running away to hide. They don't even have any pictures of that in the Y2K yearbook. The caption should have read, student Christian Chandler is depressed and sad for some reasons. His response is tears and fright. Even now as I type this, I'm still fucking angry that I didn't get anything for the things I've poured my heart, soul and hard work into, nor merged as a friend to quite a few, nor developing a positive social behavior similar to Red Skeleton. More recently, however, he's rewritten the story to incorporate his nostalgia for lost friendships. Graduation time. I only 
only got a star pin for my grades, no awards for my talents. Between that and leaving the best circle of friends I've ever had, along with leaving the best days of my life behind, I shook no one's hand and cried a lot upon receiving my diploma. Plus it was raining heavily that graduation day. The even count graduate's name was derived from Chris's feelings about his graduation. The yearbook bore the title Masala, a Hindu term for a mixture. Chris bought two yearbooks, apparently because it gave order forms to both Bob and Barb to fill out. Nobody signed his yearbook because they weren't delivered until after graduation. Chris enjoyed looking at, and mass debating too, the image of his old gal pals and included many yearbook images on the 2007 DVD. In 2009, he threw his yearbook around the room in a demonstration of strength. And I will, and we can settle this man to man. Yeah! You want to see how hard I would punch you? This is a good heavy book. I would punch you so hard. And I wouldn't even let you give me a few punches. That one's on the house. You want to, come on. You want to face me? Come on. Face me, man. You face me. You face me right now, you son of a bitch. You face me. Come on, you son of a bitch. I'm challenging you. You come face me right now. You come face me, you damn son of a bitch. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting. In 2010, Chris showed the yearbooks during his abortive attempt to scare up a class reunion. Hello. I am well known on the internet, sadly. I'm Christian Weston Chandler of Rockersville, Virginia. I was a Manchester High School student, graduated class of 2000. And I am looking into having the reunion or putting it together because I have not heard from anyone about it, not even from the principal of Manchester High. Of which, so next, so with that, I am, I am looking to, I am looking out. I am looking out to everyone, to, um, to my class 2000 class, my she, we know who you are, and I know who you are. Got your names in the year. Got your names in the yearbook, senior yearbook in my class. I have been looking forward to this re reunion since the senior prom, where at the end of that slideshow it said, "See you in ten years for the reunion." Reunion hasn't happened yet, and it has to happen. It was basically promised, not only to me, but to everybody who was at that prom. The yearbook survived the 2014 fire with smoke and water damage. Post-fire in 2014, Catherine and Al saw the yearbook at 14 BC. Generally speaking, Chris's memories of high school still hold great significance for him. This is unsurprising given that high school was the last time he regularly got out and about in social environment that seems to have at least partially accepted and tolerated him, though this was most likely because snapping at an autistic child in a public school could get you suspended. Chris has mentioned that he frequently dreams of his days in high school, recalling his teenage years in a nostalgic tone. A May 2010 YouTube video features a flood of wistful reminiscing from Chris as he laments having to move away from the suburbs where he went to high school. I had so many friends over there in high school, and I was just sad to leave when I, after I graduated. A good half dozen of the women he recalls in his archive of gal pals and past sweethearts, and most of the ones who weren't trolls, were girls he knew in high school. It was also the mat of the aforementioned Count Graduan, in whom Chris may have created an embodiment of the concept of leaving high school to be the dominant villain of his entire Sonichu saga. His graduation ceremony is perhaps one of the most painful memories and it's particularly fitting that Chris transformed the experience into a villain in his own comic book, All Things Considered. In 2013, inspired in large part by My Little Pony, Equestria Girls, his second favorite movie of all time, Chris made a Lego model of his school complete with labeled minifigures of his old gal pals because Chris being Chris, he obviously doesn't realize how creepy making 
refugees of his former lovers is. In October, he showcased his creation in a YouTube video a few days after discovering that his high school gal pals, being brave and compassionate souls, only tolerate him and allowed him near them out of pity. Not that Chris appreciates such charity. When his house burned down on the 10th of January 2014, the Lego high school partially melted and was photographed and salvaged by Chris the very next day. One of his first orders of business after moving into his temporary home was to rebuild the school, which he accomplished by March, rededicating it to Manchester High School. He continued to expand it into summer and use his high school yearbook to make Lego figurines of the entire staff. Chris's intense yearning to return to high school manifested itself in a protracted focus on attending his reunion. He imagined his reunion almost exclusively within the context of reconnecting with his old gal pals, specifically Tiffany Gowen, who he planned on asking to dance. In his gal pals and past sweetheart page from the Wikipedia, Chris noted that he didn't know exactly when this would take place, but he made no effort to find out until mid-2010, as he assumed somebody from the school would have contacted him by then. He decided to be proactive and took several clumsy steps to bring the reunion to fruition. He planned to call the principal and demand action. He made a post on classmates.com announcing the event. He personally typed up a list of classmates' names and on the 27th of August 2010 uploaded a video addressed to YouTube, a desperate plea for help in organizing it. Then he left it up to his father to field the incoming calls. Nothing came of this apart from weaning. In November there may have been a class reunion, but either way Chris did not attend. Three years later, still missing his old circle of gal pals, he tried a again, this time for a 15th annual reunion, even though it would be two years in the future. In August 2013, he contacted and friended everyone in the class of 2000 he could track down. He sent gifts to some of them and started to refer to his class as my family. I feel this is of utmost importance. I do not want anyone absent from the main reunion I'm rounding everyone up for, he emphasized. With the assistance of smarter people than himself, he produced a flyer and used his personal Facebook page to provide updates. Simultaneously, he engrossed himself in the a parallel fantasy of constructing his Lego Manchester High School. However, a combination of general apathy, troll shenanigans and his Facebook friends' exposure to the bizarre and as holish sides of Chris thwarted his efforts. The roof caved in on the 30th of October when he learned that his so-called friends had been nothing more than hired help. He sank into depression and stopped caring about the reunion. The following summer, he grumbled, fucking died Facebook, ruining socializing and making reunions considered outdated and obsolete. Sad emoji. 2015 he came and went, no reunion is known to have been held, and Chris has apparently stopped caring about it. With his ideal fantasy of high school shattered into pieces, it is likely Chris has completely given up on this universe of being happy and well liked in high school and has shifted his attention to a different universe where he's all powerful and worshipped as a goddess. In any case, it's fairly likely that Manchester High has long since banned him from setting foot on it as it happened with PVCC. Ironically enough, Chris would end up returning to Midlothian many years later. He was cited at the local Walmart by Weens a few months after his release from jail. During this time he lived at Gateway Homes, a residential care setting for mentally ill adults in the area. 